So let's talk about now about how you would start predicting what the different possible resonance structures are. Now, again, it's kind of unrealistic to ask you to predict them all because there's a lot of possibilities out there and you just kind of have to brute force it. It's more understanding what makes sense to be the most stable resonance form. So let's take a look at this molecule here. We have something with two double bonds and an oxygen radical here. So this would be as if we start out with a peroxide, we hit it with light and we split this oxygen oxygen double bond create a radical. So this would be a peroxide in the process of trying to react. What can we do? Well, we have the option of moving the radical or we have the option of moving the double bonds. So one option is to take this double bond and move it over. And this would give us a structure that looks like this. Now, because we've added an extra electron to carbon, it normally starts with four. We see five in its coordination sphere. This is a negative one and this is a plus one. Does this make sense in terms of a stable resonance structure? Well, the answer is no, because we've created a charge separation where we didn't have one before. But this would be a possible resonance structure. In terms of this molecule, we can do the same thing with the double bond. We take the double bond, move it to either carbon, we put it here, this makes this a negative one, this makes this a plus one. Is it stable? No, in fact, it's probably not likely to occur. So what about this radical? Well, we've got an option here. We have one electron, and the rule with resonance structures is we can't create or destroy the numbers of unpaired electrons, but we can definitely move them around. Now, typically what we're gonna to do to move around unpaired electrons is we're going to split a double bond in half. So in this case, we can take this double bond and we can break it into its respective electrons and then form a bond between this oxygen and this carbon. In doing this, we now move the radical to this carbon. Now, oxygen here is going to be no longer radical and it puts the radical in this carbon. Is this more or less stable? Well, it depends on how you look at it. If we look at this, we still have a zero formal charge and we had a zero formal charge before on the oxygen. So we have an add or subtract formal charges. Now, the carbon and the oxygen aren't necessarily better or worse at handling the radicals, but here we have a primary carbon we had a primary oxygen. So in this case, we're probably a little bit more stable with making this free radical on the carbon. But here we have two possible resonance forms that kind of make sense. We don't really gain or lose anything in terms of the charges, and we don't really gain or lose anything in terms of who's carrying the radical. So these would be two viable resonance forms for this molecule. One where we carry the radical on the oxygen, and one where we carry the radical on the, on the carbon. Now, are there other resonance forms where this oxygen double, or this carbon carbon double bonds being broken and moving back and forth? Yes, they do exist. But the odds of it happening are astronomically strong because small, because if we look at it, the stabilities aren't that good if we start taking that double bond and converting it to lone pairs and the carbons to the carbons. In this case, we don't really see a massive preference. And I realize that's a qualitative statement, but I'm sorry, this is what we have to work with here. We don't see a radical difference in the stabilities. There is a radical difference in stabilities if we move this double bond to be a lone pair on either of the carbons. Here, it kind of looks like a net sun game. We're not changing the formal charges. We're not creating charge separations. We're just changing who's carrying this free radical. So in this case, we'd have the two different resonance structures, and this is what we would consider the resonance structures. Now, which form is more stable? You could probably make an argument for either case, but the point is now we stabilize this radical. So this is the good thing about resonance. If you have a lot of resonance structures, you typically stabilize the molecule more because there's bound to be one configuration that's more favorable to the environment you're working in. This free radical here is a burden. Nobody wants an unpaired electron. This is Lewis theory. We always want to move towards everyone having an even number of electrons in its coordination sphere. In this case, the oxygen and carbon are trading off who's carrying that burden, and because of that, we end up seeing that between the two, we have a more stabilized molecule than if we just had one or the other.